Hello. This video is going to be a continuation of a previous video that was illustrating how to uh, get things to move around the screen with keyboard input in App Lab. Uh, in this video, I'm going to go over how to uh, constrain the movement to the screen, so basically not allow something to go out of the bounds of the screen. Uh, if you did not watch the first video and want to do that, I uh, will put a link uh, that you can click in the top of this video. Uh, but uh, if you have not done that, I would recommend doing so, so that some of the code that I'm going to start out with already makes sense. Uh, and of course, as always, the link to this finished code that I'm going to show in this video will be available in the video description. So just to uh, remind everyone what, what what we were working with, I had this little app here. It's got a, a home screen with not much on it. Um, in a real app, of course, you'd have a more elegant design, but I'm just doing this for illustrating how to do this, not making anything in particular. And I had this ship, and it can respond to... Uh, pressing the arrow keys and it can move around the screen. Now one thing that uh, probably j didn't seem very good at first was just this fact that you can move off the screen like this. So this video is just going to be relatively quick. I'm going to show you how to make sure it stays on the screen and not let it move off the screen. So as a refresher what we've got is this timed loop which is taking care of updating the position of the ship based on which keys are currently being held down and I need to modify this to not allow the position to be updated uh, if it happens that th the movement will cause it to move off of the screen. Uh, so the first thing I want to do, I've got my timed loop here inside of this uh, button one click event handler. That's this button that's uh, on the start screen. And this is fine. I just personally would prefer to tidy this up a little bit. So I'm actually going to factor out this code here into a function that I'll call update. So I'm just going to declare that function called update down, oh, down at the very bottom. And this isn't a necessary step, but for me, uh, just to keep things clean, I, would, I prefer doing it this way. So I'm just going to take out all this code that was in this timed loop, and I'm just going to uh, put it in this update function down here at the bottom. So no real change, and then of course I need to actually call that function here. So that didn't change anything about the code. All that's going to do is kind of relocate that code so it's more contained down here and this doesn't get into confusing what's going on. So this just says update the screen every 17 milliseconds and I'm going to have the code that actually does the updating in its own little function down here. Just to, for my own organizational peace of mind basically. Okay, so um, what we've got is this code which calculates an appropriate x and y velocity I've called them based on which keys are currently pressed which is fine but what I need to do now to make this do what I want not allow the ship to move off the screen is I need to compute in advance what the new x and y positions of the ship will be and if they're going to end up being off the screen not allow that move to take place so I can do that a couple ways I'm gonna make uh, a couple variables and I'm gonna have uh, I'll call them new x and new y. So let's say new x and new y. And it's basically going to be what's down here in the uh, set position, because that is the new x and the new y. So I'm just going to grab those out. That's new x and new y, and down here I'll just say new x, new y. So at this point, I have not changed anything. I've just kind of reorganized things. So let's just make sure that everything still works. And indeed, everything does still work. Uh, so now what I need, before I do this set position, I really need to make a check that um, I'm allowed to actually move the ship. So I want to do an if statement around my, my set position here, basically. So I'm going to do if, and then what's the condition? Well, this condition is somewhat complex, so let's take a minute to evaluate what we need for uh, for this condition here. So if I look at my, my screen, uh, there's a couple important points to note. So this corner up here, that's the, that's the coordinate 0, 0. And this point down here, well, we can see in the, uh, in the app lab here, if you look at the dimensions of the screen when you hover over with this cursor, it's 320 is the width, 320 pixels, and the height is 450. So it means this point down here is 320, uh, 450. 
that's that the location of that point and then again up top we add zero zero so basically I don't want the ship to have it should not be possible to have a negative X or Y component. It shouldn't be able to go off the side over this way. It shouldn't be able to go off top this way. That would be a negative Y if it ended up up here somewhere, up in this region. It would be a negative X if it ended up over here. And then also I don't want to allow the uh, X position to become larger than 450. So I don't want to let it go out this way. And I don't want to let the Y component or Y coordinate be larger Oh, I got that backwards, sorry. I don't want the Y to be larger than 450, which is down that way. And I don't want the X to be larger than 320, which is over that way. Okay, so that's all I need to do. And that's going to boil down to a, a compound Boolean expression, which will look a little bit scary, but I think uh, we can pretty easily understand what it is. So basically, I want to make sure that the new X is greater than zero. So that means it's not going to be able to go off the left side of the screen. And, so I'll use that uh, logical operator that combines two Boolean expressions, and I want to make sure that the new x is smaller than uh, the maximum x value I can have, which again was 320, so it should also be smaller than that. So both of those should be true, but also, and also, I want to make sure that similar conditions for the new y value hold. So I want to also make sure that the new y position is positive, greater than zero, and the new y position is less than the maximum value you can have, which is 450. So all together, and I'll click off of this and it'll put it in this nested structure, but basically all together what I have is conditions to make sure that the ship can't move off the screen. None of these values can become invalid. As long as that's true, update the position of the ship. If not, do nothing. So this is, if this is true, set the position of the ship to the new X and the new Y position. If it's not true, don't do anything. So I'll run this, and I'll click Start, and let's check it out. Oh, no good. Oh, no good. Can't move. Oh, we need to think about something here. We are able to move off the bottom. Let's think about why that is. And we are able to move off the side a little bit. So the keen viewer uh, may already understand why this is happening but I want it to just illustrate it so that you'll fully understand what we need to do to this compound Boolean expression here to make this behavior um, better. So let's take a look in design view. Let me take a look at our game screen here. Here's our ship. And when I'm specifying the X and Y coordinate of the ship, what I'm actually talking about is this top left corner here. That is the, where the position of the ship is located is its top left corner of this imaginary rectangle drawn around the ship so when i'm saying that that can't be um smaller or must be smaller than say 350 then all of this part of the ship can get off the screen uh, as long as that point is still on the screen it's okay so we need to think about well how can we update um, that Boolean expression here to make that valid. Well, it seems like it's only mattering when I'm going down this way or over this way, because if I'm moving up, um, that corner of the ship does stop at the appropriate point, and same thing if I'm moving left. So I need to take care of the situation when I'm moving too far to the right and also too far down. So those are going to be this second part of the Y part and the second part of the X part. Well, how do we do it? Well, we need to add in the width and height of the ship. Uh, to take care of that. So there's a few ways you could do it. You could either kind of hard code it, so you could go to the design view, I could take a look at the ship, and I could just look, okay, it's 75 pixels wide, 80 pixels tall. Um, one good way, one thing though, like if that changes, I might not want to just put like a hard coded number in my code here. So one thing I could do is actually just at the beginning of my program make a, a global variable uh, and I think that's the approach I'll take here, but it's definitely not the only way to do it. You can make a, a global variable called like ship width, and we'll think about what we put there. And I could also make a global variable called ship height. And I could actually just directly get those values using um, the get property. So if I go over here to the UI controls, I can possibly scroll down. Oh, I think I can't scroll right now, but um, how about we 
go back to blocks and I think it will allow me to scroll down so there's a get property and I want to get the width and height of the ship is the property I want to I want to um, obtain so I'll go I want get property image one width and get property image one height and so what this will do when the program starts it will give the appropriate values width and height to the ship and right again that's really equivalent to uh, just manually typing in 75 and 80 but I, w I prefer not to do that because if you uh, make a decision in your design view to change the size of something uh, it's easier if your code is just automatically accounting for that rather than having to go back and uh, change that manually so anyway uh, we can go over to this expression now and we can say as long as the new x position of the ship plus the width is less than 320 so new x plus ship width and same thing for the y as long as the new y plus the height of the ship is less than 450 then stick it on make sure it can't move so looks like we're good on the bottom good on the top good on the left and good on the right so now the ship is not able to move off of the screen it's fully bounded to the screen using this complex compound boolean expression here at the bottom um, and even if you want you could even kind of space it out just so it's a little bit easier to read um, so let's see we've got the condition for the x part so that's the side to side movement and then the condition for the y part the up and down movement i just broke it onto two lines like this so it's a little bit easier to read but of course that's not um, necessary so that is how to bound a ship to the screen or uh, any image for that matter and i've modified that original movement program that i wrote for getting something to move on the screen and so this is a pretty straightforward way to um, have something on the screen that you can move around with the arrow keys or if you want to use WASD or something like that instead you just change some of that original code uh, but that's how you can do it um, and again there's not just one way to do this but this is sort of uh, the easiest to understand that I can think of so I appreciate your attention to this video definitely keep an eye out on my YouTube channel here if you're interested in uh, possibly more videos in the future where I go over some more code that can be used as building blocks for simple games in App Lab. Catch you in the next one.